as you heard, the title is uh, at the top of the slide. <clears throat> there are um, many words, but the most important are um, the four words uh, in the top two lines. Um, the, um, the first thing I teach in my uh, career is uh, that uh, words have meaning. In other words, um, before we uh, talk, we should know uh, not only ourselves, but uh, our uh, listeners should know the meaning of the words. Freedom means uh, a uh, collection of features that allow the object to change. No uh, freedom, no change. And for that matter, no change comes from lack of freedom. Uh, evolution from uh, the Latin word means change after change in a direction that's discernible to the observer. The, um, and by the way, uh, freedom uh, is actually half of, two, uh, half of a pair. Uh, the other half of freedom is lack of freedom or, uh, or uh, sh uh, being shackled or bolted to the ground. It's the same with evolution, uh, change after change in a particular direction is not a bit confused with uh, with a revolution, which really means the upturning of that particular sequence of changing. And then in the second line, uh, to predict the future. The future, of course, is the other half of the pair uh, in which uh, the past is present. Uh, future and time are uh, words that come with the perception of, uh, sorry, future and past, they come with the perception of time. And um, so, so far, I, re I review for you notions that uh, uh, we all um, understand and we share and we use all the time. And finally, <clears throat> to predict uh, means to see with the eyes of the mind before you look at the object. And to predict is the opposite of uh, uh, being a peeping Tom, which is to look and then describe. Uh, the latter is called empiricism. So today's lecture is about um, uh, predicting all these uh, things that uh, I enumerated. Uh, now, to predict, meaning to, uh, to have this ability to see with the, with the mind, uh, the mind needs a reliable um, statement of truth or a principle. Principle. In, um, in this domain that uh, I teach, which is actually thermodynamics, that principle is called law, or law of physics. And the law, as you see uh, in an illustrated manner, is a simple summary of a distinct phenomenon. A distinct phenomenon, just like um, <clears throat> what you see on the screen, is <coughs> is an observation that repeats itself the same way in the billions. Here uh, we get an even stronger or louder message. Uh, this image, which is the same in the uh, river delta and in the human lung, is of course uh, present in many other places, but uh, one uh, belongs in the geophysics, the other one uh, belongs in uh, uh, biology, which really means that the image is the phenomenon and it is both animate and inanimate, therefore it represents all nature. And the name for that is physics, meaning non-denominational. Here's another version of that uh, from the human realm on the left, <clears throat> the movement of a population in, uh, in the city is, uh, well, um, <clears throat> a superposition of uh, human uh, river basins and uh, human uh, river deltas. Uh, a river basin, if, uh, if you see the one in the middle in pink, when the population uh, congregates uh, in the, um, let's say, city square or at a sports arena, the reverse, uh, meaning after the basketball game, the same population flows outward um, as a river delta. So urban life is, as I said, uh, it looks complicated, it is multi-multi-dimensional, uh, uh, but it, it, that comes from the superposition of uh, flows uh, very similar to the ones that are painted on the left. Uh, another thing to uh, observe here is that the city grid is not 
the configuration in which people move through the city. Um, the human population flows, as shown here in colors. The city grid happens to be the cheapest, the simplest uh, set of channels that facilitate this kind of uh, not only uh, dendritic flow, but the superposition of very many of such flows on the same area. The drawing on the left of this is the simplest possible. It omits the uh, dead ends and the cul-de-sacs. You see those on the right in the veins of a uh, uh, tree leaf uh, fallen on the floor in a forest in uh, Costa Rica. So uh, design in nature, uh, once again, unites uh, <laughs> all, all the image, image occurrence phenomena that uh, surround us and which are inside of us. By the way, these image are, Im images are all about things that flow, things that change, <laughs> things that morph. Um, a, a small incursion into um, um, what uh, drives the change, well, uh, nothing moves unless it is driven. And uh, the, uh, the pushing comes from engines. Most of these engines are uh, natural. The earth is the biggest uh, uh, that we can uh, uh, feel or perceive. Uh, the earth is set in motion by, uh, by uh, uh, the solar heating. Uh, it is then uh, kept at this uh, um, static uh, temperature called climate by uh, cooling to the sky. Basically, solar heat in, uh, heat uh, rejected to the sky uh, is 100% the same as what comes from the sun. But in the meantime, inside the, uh, the Earth uh, sphere, um, a movement happens. Uh, one example of that movement is on the left-hand side. Uh, the uh, circuit executed by water and nature is one of these many, many wheels uh, embedded in, uh, in the upper left drawing. Uh, the water flows uh, downward, that's rain, then it uh, is a vehicle uh, by uh, rivers on the surface on the land. Uh, it is then vehicle upward by um, evaporation from uh, vegetation. And it is vehicle in all directions uh, by, uh, by um, uh, the biosphere. The biosphere, just think about uh, the uh, animal body on land, it's mostly water, uh, moving water from one place to another. And um, you know, all these little uh, icons or sketches, uh, changings are happening because of freedom, happening not only in, um, in form, in the drawings, but also in the movement of those uh, objects. And so the bottom line is that uh, because of the omnipresence of freedom, evolution happens. And uh, the result of that is the observation that uh, there is a whole called nature that uh, represents uh, everything that uh, happened, meaning everything that was born, because by the way, nature means uh, birth in Latin, and, uh, and uh, everything that will be. The, uh, the next slide shows uh, the same things uh, in a slightly different way. In the, uh, in the left, in the, uh, in the blue uh, uh, domain, uh, many drawings of uh, the, uh, the engines to which I referred. Um, the number is uh, immense. On the right, uh, the uh, power plants, uh, animal or uh, natural, are uh, in the blue uh, disc. And in the, um, in the green uh, rectangle uh, reside the, uh, I call them brakes, the moving objects that were powered, were pushed by the power. And um, the, uh, the brakes dissipate uh, the power. Movement happens from left to right. It is irreversible. And, <laughs> and the dissipation uh, means that, uh, as I showed earlier, uh, the uh, heat input from uh, the energy source is eventually rejected 100% to the cold sky. Uh, the, the phenomenon, once again, is, um, is the, uh, what are you doing? The phenomenon is uh, the, um, the flow configuration, 
and the fact that it has uh, freedom to change in a discernible direction. The um, statement that I made, meaning the summary that I uh, proposed uh, in 1996, is known as the constructor law of evolution in nature. I wrote it this way for a flow system to persist in time. This is uh, uh, to say to live in thermodynamics. It must evolve with freedom such that it provides greater access. In uh, green, I have uh, three snapshots from a, the movie of a river basin uh, being born on the floor of a laboratory. From, uh, from left to right, the, um, the river basin changes, but uh, it, is, uh, it is a tree. It is arborescent, one that flows better and better over time. The, um, the, uh, the movie tape uh, rolls from left to right. And that is, in fact, the arrow of time in, in, uh, in nature. Time proceeds in one direction, meaning change after change happens in one discernible direction. And uh, now a few things about uh, power. Power, um, um, <laughs> without it, nothing moves. Um, the, uh, and I'll uh, draw attention to uh, the Homo sapiens. Um, and uh, where, where we come from. Uh, the history of uh, the Homo sapiens uh, really took off uh, uh, right after the adoption of fire, um, uh, almost two million years ago. And um, before that, uh, from the uh, human point of view, the fire was burning the f in the forest and uh, all of that uh, heating was uh, dumped uh, into the environment uh, unchanged. The QH at the bottom is uh, the, uh, the fate of everything that burns. W with, the, with the sapiens uh, inserted between the fire and the cold ambient, a portion of that heating was forced to uh, flow through the human space. That uh, darkened arrow, um, make sure that the living space is at a temperature above the cold ambient. But in the end, of course, uh, all those cues add up to the QH at the bottom. The sapiens was uh, uh, wise early on, uh, but uh, prehistoric humans did not uh, brag about it. And uh, by the way, to discover this, is uh, in uh, the habits that, uh, that uh, persist even today. One habit is to make the, 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 uh, the pyre, meaning the pile of, uh, of fuel, uh, shaped in a particular way. Uh, you see it here on uh, my grill at home, uh, but I knew this uh, growing up, that the hottest fire, hottest fire, is the one that's uh, shaped this way. Turns out that um, it is possible to to demonstrate on the back of an envelope that yes, the hottest uh, uh, burning pile uh, will should have this shape, and uh, in other words, the uh, the uh, the uh, <laughs> the making of a more and more powerful fire for human use is uh, the beginning of the so-called energy technology. Energy technology did not start with James Watt. In fact, uh, the entire human history is about these uh, little things that uh, proved useful uh, from, uh, let's say, decade to decade and were adopted. Uh, on the left, uh, the naked uh, human. This is a hand uh, drawn by Leonardo da Vinci. Um, uh, obviously, early on also, uh, tools were uh, attached to the uh, naked human body. These days, of course, um, we hear a lot about uh, intelligent arms, but pay attention. The intelligent arm is not, not removing the need uh, to have uh, the plumber and his wrench, you see. That's the, and uh, by the way, I can make this joke uh, with respect to the middle of the drawing. The wrench <coughs> did, not, <laughs> did not make uh, the, uh, the hand of the naked uh, human uh, useless. See, in evolution, what works is kept. The, what is kept is called an add-on uh, in the human realm, that's called an artifact. So uh, most of us, uh, sorry, all of us, are essentially uh, 
big, big assemblies of artifacts uh, walking on the surface of the earth. And uh, finally, this uh, line from, um, I mean, uh, temporarily, finally, this line from uh, Matthew Bolton. If you haven't heard of Ma Matthew Bolton, please remember this. Without him, James Watt would not be known. The name for uh, the factories in which the uh, machines, steam engines of James Watt were made was the Bolton and Watt Works. Uh, Bolton was the business partner of uh, James Watt, and uh, the business partner is the one who uh, spread these engines very, very successfully all over Britain and then uh, Western Europe. And um, uh, when he met a group of visitors uh, at the entrance to his uh, factory, he said, this is a famous declaration, I sell here, sir, what all the world desires to have, power. And by power he meant what we, today we call what. So why? Because power uh, induces movement and because movement means life. And now uh, a few words about the movement. Um, one example that's familiar to everyone is uh, bird in flight. As children, we know birds fly at a particular altitude. Uh, the small ones uh, not, too, not too high, the bigger ones fly high. And that's, not, uh, that's the early impression. However, because the bird must uh, flap its wings in order to uh, maintain its altitude, the trajectory of a flight is, uh, is uh, periodic. I drew it here as a zigzag, uh, a, uh, a cycle or two efforts, a WY, which means the bird has to do work to lift itself, that is a vertical work, and then a WX, which is the work done by the same bird in order to penetrate through the environment. Important to note, to note, please, the audience, the environment is not getting out of the way uh, by itself. The environment has to be uh, gotten out of the way. And that is actually the interaction between, uh, um, let's say, object and uh, the surroundings. It is one in which the surroundings, uh, sorry, the object as it moves, moves because it has impact on the environment. So let me review. Power means movement and movement means uh, having impact on the environment. Uh, in the lower right, um, uh, by the way, to publish anything uh, these days, uh, even if it's a pure theory, uh, one um, is uh, sentenced to the, uh, to the chamber where uh, uh, that uh, particular uh, idea has to be tested against data. So in the lower right corner, we went through this uh, um, punishment and uh, show that the predicted uh, speed of everything that, flow, that flies, uh, shown here as a solid uh, straight line, agrees with the uh, reported speeds of uh, flyers. The red cloud is from uh, uh, data in zoology books. Uh, the other clouds come from the same place. The same theory uh, predicts the blue the blue cloud, the blue, sorry, the dashed line, which agrees with the data shown here in blue from uh, the same zoology uh, books, and also the data for uh, terrestrial uh, animals with locomotion fills the, the green, <coughs> the green um, cloud. Now, uh, a question that people <laughs> did not ask until uh, um, our group uh, showed up. Uh, why is that cloud uh, not uh, a thin line? Well, uh, I showed you these two efforts, uh, WY and WX. Uh, the sum of, they are plotted here um, versus uh, the cruising speed. The cruising speed is uh, on a horizontal base. Uh, these two effects, WY and WX, are competing. When one decreases, the other one increases. And that means that the sum of the two uh, goes through a minimum. Now, um, please admit that you've been raised, just like Adrian, to uh, go <coughs> and pray in the church of uh, optimum and minimum and maximum and best. Well, uh, the name for that uh, unique design, uh, meaning a particular speed of, uh, of uh, locomotion, 
uh, is called here perfection. That uh, unique point may be interesting as a concept, but it is uh, nowhere, uh, nowhere <laughs> in the hand of the, uh, of the moving animal. Uh, and the reason is that um, the curve of performance called uh, W, the total work requirement, <laughs> is co convex, and that means it has a round bottom, and it also means that the so-called minim minim minimal uh, work requirement belongs to a bandwidth of speeds, shown here as a dark column. And, uh, and that means that with a little bit of imperfection, I'm talking about 1% or even less, comes a sizable bandwidth of freedom to uh, use, a, in this case, a particular speed and fly uh, economically and uh, get uh, out of the way of danger without having to learn mathematics. Imagine uh, proposing that to the bird. So, uh, so freedom comes from the, the, uh, the talent of not being wedded to fixed ideas. Now, of course, the cloud is uh, more than a paint. Actual uh, animals uh, populate those clouds. We went through this uh, exercise uh, uh, many times. Uh, we've updated this particular chart uh, most recently by showing that the, uh, the ships, uh, an immense number of ships today on the, uh, on the globe, are um, uh, basically in agreement with all the other swimmers. The airplanes appear slightly above the line, but that's uh, a mistake on our part. Uh, the, the airplanes are flying in, uh, in an atmosphere that's uh, not as dense as the near ground uh, air um, uh, overcome by animals. So when accounting for the difference in, uh, in the des air density, the, uh, the um, human-made uh, birds are uh, in line with the uh, uh, natural, one, uh, natural ones. And uh, the diversity represented by those uh, thick clouds uh, is attributable, attributable um, in addition to the fact that uh, uh, the size of the, an of the animal has um, an impact on uh, the configuration of the animal and also on the uh, relative performance of that particular body. If you look in the upper, um, oh no, uh, look, uh, the up I have three animals here. Uh, except that I, I like to make my drawings uh, the same size. So if you compare um, uh, the cat, the lion, and the elephant from left to right, you notice that uh, from uh, small to large, the, um, the body develops uh, uh, bigger legs and a smaller belly, you see. And uh, so if, you, uh, if your attitude is to consider uh, one animal is a particle in a uh, somewhere in a bouncing in a box, a la Boltzmann. No, the mover has architecture that is uh, that has size, and it has a purpose, meaning um, a movement uh, in a in evolutionary movement in a particular direction of change. And out of that comes the fact that the body of the mover is uh, multi-scale. Uh, some will call it uh, complicated, but uh, this particular relationship between uh, leg uh, volume and uh, uh, total volume is uh, predictable from uh, the principle that I'm invoking without uh, telling you. Everything that I tell you has been uh, predicted and published in the peer-reviewed literature. Uh, it is also in, in the books that I will uh, recommend at the end of the lecture. And now another thing that um, uh, must be uh, kept in uh, mind is that uh, movement is not uh, haphazard. Uh, movement is guided. Locomotion is guided. Certain, certain uh, images in the surroundings are more attractive than others. Of course, uh, some uh, images are dangerous. Others are uh, friendly and useful. Um, and by the way, uh, in, the, uh, in the defense uh, department domain, uh, we know about this. Uh, telescope, periscope, uh, radar, all these uh, uh, instruments um, 
have been invented for the purpose of allowing the moving vehicle to perceive um, farther and faster and to discern the difference between uh, uh, dangerous and friendly. Uh, this is just one example of uh, attractiveness. Uh, we uh, are definitely attracted to images shaped uh, like the My Business Card. Uh, that is why uh, 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 photograph printouts, the computer screen, uh, they look like uh, the, sta the, the, the flags of nations. Even the paragraphs on the page uh, look uh, this way. Why? Because they are scanned the fastest. Uh, scanning is done by two eyes because uh, all these animals, uh, meaning most of the ones that uh, have locomotion and we're familiar with, have two eyes uh, uh, aligned with the uh, horizon uh, because uh, to the animal the world looks flat. Um, and the scanning that's done with two eyes has a, an effective speed in the horizontal direction that's about 50% greater than in the vertical direction. And that is, <coughs> that is why the image that's perceived the fastest, of course, we do this unwittingly, perceived the fastest uh, has the shape of the binocular field of vision, which happens to be the shape of the business card. And um, at this point, I'll uh, take a sip of water. And um, uh, also continuing the idea of locomotion or movement. And I'll um, draw your attention to another, let's say, uh, larger scale phenomenon called spreading. Um, everything that flows obviously flows in time and in space. Uh, that combination is called spreading. I have examples here about the, uh, the growth of the uh, <laughs> population of, uh, of uh, Brewer's East in the upper left, uh, the, the growth of the population of people with radios, and then later uh, people with TV sets uh, in history, and then uh, you can pick any uh, research paper that gets published. You can uh, plot uh, the number of citations versus time. Every and the, the citations represent the spreading of that uh, knowledge from the published paper, the spreading on the surface of the earth. The spreading is, is in S-curve fashion, slow, fast, slow. And uh, we see it again here, the uh, power production of uh, in the United States, the upper dots uh, is a one S-curve, the middle one is uh, the number of miles uh, driven in the U.S. Um, annually, that is another S-curve, and at the bottom is the S-curve of the, uh, of the uh, world population, meaning according to the UN, uh, the world population will, uh, will uh, reach its peak in 2050. And keep that in mind the next time you hear uh, people um, uh, uh, talking about uh, the population explosion. That was the, uh, the fashion in uh, 1970, uh, and it did not happen. And oh yes, with uh, the principle that, um, that um, uh, was at the start of my lecture, this uh, S-curve is uh, once again predictable on the back of an envelope. Um, in this case, with a model of, uh, of, um, of uh, an object, uh, in this case a, a, hot, a hot blade, that the invades from the left a conductive territory that is colder. The blade has a speed called V, which is the invasion speed. And um, as the blade invades, the, um, the material immediately next to the blade uh, warms up. So that is the, on the left is the, the finger of, uh, let's call it invaded territory. When the blade reaches the, uh, meaning hits the wall, which is in the next square, then, uh, then the invasion stops and the result is consolidation, uh, meaning that uh, the heating of uh, the uh, still uh, unheated territory continues sideways. Um, what is easy to show is that uh, the size of the shaded area during invasion increases in accelerated fashion, as in the little square at the bottom of the slide, and during consolidation, it increases, continues to increase in decelerating 
fashion. So when these two curves are spliced together, then the result is the predicted S curve. <coughs> there are people interested in, uh, in accelerating the spreading and with a constructor law, the solution is uh, immediately accessible. The answer is uh, spreading will be faster when the invasion is uh, not uh, as a needle, but as, an, as a tree or arborescent with uh, many levels of branching. Of course, this is what happens uh, with a, a new product uh, released by, let's say, Apple computer. That kind of spreading is uh, facilitated uh, because of the existence of uh, uh, channels of uh, uh, distribution all over the world, uh, channels that are connected by supply uh, routes that are uh, continuous in, uh, in uh, arborescent fashion. I'll say one more thing in view of um, my uh, current audience. Uh, when I wrote this paper, I chose the words invasion and consolidation, um, having in mind the, um, their use in, um, in the military uh, during a, uh, the invasion of a, of a new territory. The first phase is the one that I drew on the left. The, um, the <laughs> remaining phase is the one that I drew on the right. And there are th these words are extremely useful uh, for many reasons, and I just spelled out two reasons. Um, speaking of uh, arborescent flow architectures, these are drawings made out of uh, many, many lines, uh, except that uh, uh, the lines are not uh, equal. Uh, the, uh, the, the big and uh, the fast flowing are few. The uh, small and the uh, uh, slow flowing are many. So uh, that, uh, of course, uh, raises the question of uh, what is the origin of this uh, configuration, the hierarchical configuration, the river basin, the lungs, all these things. The answer um, is a, um, a two-punch argument. Number one, uh, economies of scale. Imagine uh, you have a stream that flows through two parallel tubes in the upper left corner. Well, that stream uh, flows uh, much more easily through a single tube, the size of which, meaning the volume of which, equals the sum of the first two volumes. You can see the same argument if you grew up on a river and compare, uh, at least in your mind, uh, the power required from a tugboat to drag uh, two barges, as opposed to the power required to drag a single barge that has a, a, a bigger load equal to the sum of the two previous loads. The answer is that it's easier uh, to go from uh, too small to one large in this uh, direction of evolution of design. That economies of scale as physics, not as uh, uh, a, um, let's call it observation that's true uh, coming from economics. Economies of scale is uh, also the physics behind the phenomenon of organization and joining. But then why is there a hierarchy? Why isn't everything big uh, and singular? And the reason is that on a surface, uh, such as uh, the earth or inside the animal body, the flow is not from point to point. It is from one, between one point and one area or between one point and a whole volume. And we know from Euclid that the area consists of an infinite number of points and the volume of an infinite number of points. And that means that this thing that, uh, that uh, travels must go from one point in all these, uh, uh, toward an, an infinite number of destinations. And um, the, uh, <laughs> imagine, imagine making that drawing you can uh, draw one uh, big channel, like the one recommended by economies of scale. That one does not cover the area. Then you can draw two big that are actually smaller than the first. That leaves uh, a big armpit between them. And then, of course, in that uh, empty space, uh, you, you, are, <laughs> you are begged to insert more big channels, you think, 
more, uh, which are smaller than the previous ones, so that uh, you cover the uh, the white area uh, more and more completely. And at the end of this uh, uh, tendency, uh, what emerges is the hierarchical flow architecture, and um, and of course that is uh, all over all over the uh, human-made and uh, not human-made world. On the left side, the hierarchy of the movement of people in the Atlanta airport. It's a rectangular area. Um, that particular shape, by the way, is the constructed shape for a rectangle that's being accessed by uh, a large number of, uh, of uh, movers uh, from any point to any other point. Uh, this hierarchy is also goes as the few large and many small, or few fast and many slow. Um, all over the place we see the same thing. The, uh, the, the movement of freight on an area uh, is shown on the upper right. The same freight is vehicle by few large uh, uh, vehicles traveling long and fast, and uh, disposing of the same freight uh, sideways to uh, more numerous smaller uh, vehicles that travel short and slow. Uh, in the animal realm, it is, um, uh, from my point of view, the same phenomenon or the same movie. It's called the food chain. Use your imagination about the uh, peaceful coexistence of a few predators long and fast with uh, many rodents uh, uh, short and slow. Um, so hierarchy is a, uh, another uh, uh, way to remember the, uh, the origin and then the emergence of all these flow architectures with freedom to morph. Here I, I made a drawing of um, uh, some of the, the, uh, the most common flyers from uh, insects to birds and uh, the uh, commercial airplanes in the vertical direction, the population size in the uh, horizontal direction, the body size, uh, the drawing is qualitative, but uh, when the data are projected on this, uh, on this uh, domain, they line up uh, as a cloud descending from uh, upper left to lower right. And now we get to uh, size. Um, size, um, well, uh, size is important, as you saw in the speeds of flyers, but uh, it is also predictable. Here's, a, um, um, here's how size uh, <laughs> knocks uh, at the door of our uh, uh, curiosity. Uh, this is a plot of uh, the uh, models of airplanes adopted, uh, dur commercial airplanes adopted during uh, their not uh, very long history. The, um, on the vertical is the, the, the weight, meaning the size of the flying body. On the right is the year of uh, adoption. Um, yes, uh, this is a mountain of, uh, of uh, drawings, meaning models. And uh, broadly speaking, from left to right, uh, the crest of the mountain is rising, meaning that uh, big models uh, continue to uh, add themselves to the previously big models. On the other hand, um, uh, I like the, uh, the second impression, which is that during every new decade, uh, new models arrive in all sizes. Uh, and those that arrive and which are new are few large and many small. And it is the new models that are um, uh, sweeping the, uh, the surface of the earth. And you'll see in my last slide, uh, the sweeping is hierarchical. In other words, human life, which means movement, at, at this moment on Earth is uh, like a river basin. So there is hierarchy of sizes, and, um, and the bodies that fly are not simple. As I said, not one of them is uh, one particle bouncing in a box. Uh, the airplane has uh, in many uh, large-scale features. One of them is the engine. The engine, as opposed to the, uh, the, the whole body of the airplane, well, uh, with a constructor law, it is easy to predict that the engine should be roughly one-tenth, meaning the size, one-tenth of the total body size. Um, and this sort of, uh, of course, the data line up uh, in order to agree with the prediction. 
sorry, as if to agree with the prediction. The prediction is uh, equally valid for birds. Big birds uh, have uh, big uh, uh, muscle mass. Small birds have small muscle mass. Uh, the reason why a particular size emerges, one that uh, goes with the size of the body, uh, is uh, shown here. Uh, the, uh, the flyer, in this case an airplane with a heart, um, needs, uh, needs the motor. However, the motor called component size uh, on the abscissa uh, could have any size. Well, from the economy of scale, the efficiency of that uh, motor uh, increases, meaning the motor um, that uh, is needed to power the flight uh, can be smaller and smaller. Uh, in the opposite direction, the uh, sorry could be bigger and bigger. The bigger the bigger motors are more efficient. That's economies of scale. And um, and the rising line um, uh, points in the opposite direction uh, because the bigger uh, engine, uh, efficient as it is, is a heavier suitcase to carry. Therefore, the vehicle has to burn more fuel to carry that particular component. So once again, the intersection of asymptotes um, identifies the uh, general location of the, uh, of the regime of uh, uh, movement that's uh, most economical. And that is uh, a regime in which the motor has a size which is characteristic to the size of the body. So big things have big components. Small things have small components. No thing has really huge components. And now I'll uh, end with uh, a few quick examples of uh, uh, some of these other features, uh, predicted features of airplanes. Uh, for me, the most uh, uh, educational is the predicted the proportionality between wingspan and fuselage length. Once again, you see the cloud rising during the uh, history of commercial aviation. On the vertical is the wingspan. On the on the horizontal is the fuselage length. Uh, and this uh, tendency um, was, uh, let's say, discovered by the animal flyers a lot earlier. Another thing that's uh, evident, if you look uh, both at theory and then at uh, data, is that uh, over the history of uh, flight, in this case helicopters, the, um, the, uh, this particular animal, the helicopter, has uh, become uh, more efficient. The, uh, the specific fuel consumption uh, has been uh, decreasing, again, uh, in br broadly speaking, from decade to decade. And that means, of course, speaking of predicting the future, that it will continue to behave this way. Uh, for helicopters, uh, the same discovery as for airplanes. The engines have predicted to scale with the total body mass. M sub E is the engine, the total mass is capital M, and uh, this trend uh, predicted from theory is, uh, it will continue. Uh, same with uh, the uh, proportionality between uh, engine mass and fuel load. Uh, that is a predicted proportionality and it'll, it will continue. And uh, this is uh, one that requires a little more explaining uh, for uh, helicopters again the rotor radius um, was predicted to uh, scale with the uh, body length, but at the, in the top e equation it is written as uh, proportional to uh, the body mass to the power one-third. However, the body mass is the cube of the body length scale, and that makes, uh, that formula really states that the rotor radius is uh, uh, destined to continue to increase in proportion with uh, with the body leg scale. And finally, the, um, the specific work um, is um, also, again, a la economies of scale, goes uh, monotonically upward with the engine size. The bigger, the bigger are more efficient. And uh, next, um, uh, it is important to ask after a presentation made by any any professor, uh, why is this important to me? Now, uh, I have a pictorial review of the things I showed. 
uh, human life in the city is uh, is uh, basically a, a movement uh, like in scanning, scanning the area. The scanning is done in uh, tree-like fashion. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner is the same thing that I alluded to earlier, is the, uh, the scanning of the whole globe uh, thanks to aviation. Uh, those uh, paints there uh, have to do with the uh, intensity of uh, condensation trails uh, left uh, uh, by all the flying aircraft. You see there the uh, uh, the whole globe is uh, is uh, uh, covering the Earth, but uh, like the red blood cells in the human body, uh, sooner or later uh, the uh, the red blood cell will have to flow through the heart. And in this case, the heart of the uh, <coughs> the animal is in uh, where it was born, where the animal was born, which was in uh, Europe and North America. Another thing to, um, to observe is that, um, um, again, I have uh, the denim on my mind, uh, the flood. The flood represents uh, more movement, greater movement driven by greater power. Um, that uh, movement um, is destined to invade a territory that's occupied by less intense movement. This is the direction uh, that earlier I called the invasion. And of course, if you have this in mind, you understand why, uh, why the movement across the Atlantic uh, had to uh, happen in this particular direction. <clears throat> and it happened because uh, in Europe, the technology of, um, of um, crossing the, uh, the seas uh, was uh, um, in the full swing from left to right. Uh, we have Egyptian galley, and then uh, the uh, one of the ships of uh, Columbus, and then on the uh, the upper right is uh, one of the ships in Napoleon's navy. All these things made uh, uh, seafaring uh, more and more uh, economical and faster, and that uh, brought us uh, uh, century after century to. Uh, to human movement today. Um, on the left side, this uh, uh, global picture is uh, summarized as, uh, as the, those dots. Every country is a black dot. On the vertical is the gross domestic product or the wealth, the annual wealth of that uh, country or population. On the um, abscissa, on the horizontal, is the uh, annual consumption of fuel uh, in that particular population. And we see here uh, what uh, to me uh, was not surprising because life is movement and movement comes from power and power comes from, from uh, a, a fuel uh, or food. We, we see that there's an alignment uh, and the alignment says that the language uh, spoken in economics, which is the language of wealth, is uh, the same, uh, the same uh, phenomenon as the language of uh, energy and movement spoken in uh, physics and engineering. Another thing is, everybody knows, uh, every group, uh, every group uh, um, uh, uh, acts, uh, makes changes in order to move uh, more easily uh, per unit of fuel uh, uh, spent. That uh, from this uh, diagonal means uh, the movement is upward. <clears throat> toward greater wealth. No one would disagree with that tendency, greater wealth. So now you see the arrow of time pointing uh, toward the future, meaning that all the dots on the diagonal are um, racing like the uh, bicyclists in the Tour de France. And um, so, uh, interesting, but that's another whole picture. On the right side is another way to plot the same data. Uh, this time I put the uh, annual consumption of fuel on the vertical, and on the horizontal is the, um, it's blocked here, but it's the competitive's uh, uh, rank, meaning economic freedom. On the abscissa is economic freedom. The dots we have already established are racing upward. And uh, without knowing, they're racing upward uh, toward uh, uh, not only uh, greater fuel consumption, never mind the wealth, that goes without saying, greater fuel consumption and greater freedom. 
today, as you see from this uh, cloud, uh, the world is of two kinds. A small group that has uh, hit the ceiling, uh, and then uh, the rest of the world that's uh, racing upward uh, to hit the same ceiling. And that is the good news, especially in view of uh, some of the slogans you hear today. Uh, compare these predictions with, uh, with uh, what you hear in, uh, in the classrooms and uh, on television. I end uh, the presentation with uh, the fact that uh, this uh, idea of hierarchy has been observed uh, many times in the past. Um, here is a quote from uh, Cervantes. Uh, he quotes uh, Don Quixote talking to Sancho. Bear in mind, Sancho, that one man is no more than another unless, one, unless he does more than another. So what, what the uh, specimen of the Homo sapiens does in collaboration with uh, his immediate environment matters. This is the, uh, the conclusion, which is summarized uh, here at the very top, that hierarchy in fuel consumption means hierarchy in movement, and I showed hierarchy in wealth. Now, uh, from an academic point of view, <clears throat> to, uh, to teach and then learn theory is eminently valuable. This is why I brought it to your attention today. With theory, this uh, crystal ball, or seeing with the eye of the man, mind, one uh, acquires the power to predict, uh, the power to fast forward technology evolution, the power to be more economical, and the power to <laughs> to produce things that are uh, testable and reliable, therefore true. If you would like to learn more, um, I wrote, as you heard, uh, many books, but uh, my most recent books um, tend to be of the uh, popular kind and for the general audience. Um, from left to right, during the past 10 years, uh, Design in Nature, The Physics of Life, Freedom and Evolution, and Time and Beauty, the thread, the thread of uh, the sequence of books, which represents my own evolution, is the same as the thread in uh, my lecture today. Uh, with freedom, uh, change is possible. With change, after change, evolution is possible. And uh, because of evolution, nature is possible.